Ready? Go. All right, here we go. Wayne Stein never gets old three times in a row, right? No, it doesn't get old. I mean, this is what you work for, right? This is what you spend all the time in the summer and what the kids dream about. And, you know, we've been blessed to do it a couple of times, but it, it never gets old. How difficult has it been to navigate to get to this stage? Can you want to talk? Well, I think it, it has been difficult, you know, but we always say we're never going to be the – be the hunted. We always gonna be out there hunting. And so our kids uh, have taken on that that mentality. I mean, this is where we're already expected to be. Uh, uh, that was even the seniors. They, they told me we're gonna go undefeated and be in the dome. And so they spoke it into existence. And, and here we are. Ohio, very tough team. Found a way to win this time. Yeah, I just think it's the culture of our kids. You know, uh, we're battle tested, and it's it's not always pretty. You know. Uh, Sometimes our style of football is not is not fun to watch. You know, we don't have a bunch of guys lighting up stats because I think we're a three-phase program. We're going to play offense, defense, and special teams. I think our offense's uh, average starting field position is the 40-yard line. So, uh, you know, we just always talk about getting into the fourth quarter and finding a way. I think our kids are comfortable being uncomfortable, and there were some uncomfortable moments in that game, and, and that's why right, we're here today. Calvary Panthers, best offense you've ever faced this year? Uh, you know, that's a, that's a heck of a statement with our schedule that we played. Very good. I think the uh, the back is, I would have to say, is the best back we faced. He's special. Uh, you know, and, and we face a bunch of good offenses. But uh, I think one of the most prolific for sure. You know, I think the, a good combination of being able to run the football and, and throw the football, uh, they're definitely one of the best offensive attacks we've had to face. Somebody different that. You, you've seen a lot of the same people over time, obviously, LCA three years in a row in the finals, but uh, this is somebody who haven't played in a few years. Is it good to be able to see somebody different at this point, you think? Yeah, it is. You know, and to, to, you know, I don't know if it's an advantage of us or them, but you know, just not to have the familiarity. I mean, we played Notre Dame so many times. And, uh, you know, the prior two roles were, you know, uh, done on Notre Dame and then, you know, and all of those things. So it's nice to have uh, an unfamiliar opponent and, have an opportunity to to learn as much as you can about them, and uh, and you got to do that in, in a short time. Even though we do have an extra day, so uh, I do think it's been something that's been pleasant to have some somebody different. New quarterback this year, coach. You know, that, I know he's he has some experience, but you leaned heavily on him on the last two years. But it seems like it's been a pretty seamless transition. Yeah, and obviously we didn't uh, we didn't want this to happen. But last year, Altamont all going down for that time period, I think prepared Brady for this year. You know, uh, I think instead of going through some growing pains early in the year, that happened last year, and, and I thought he played well last year. You know, the losses we had surely weren't because of him, and it's just different. There are things that he does better than Aiden, uh, and there are things that Aiden did better than him. But I think what they both have. And, and Brady actually referenced this in the interview Friday. You know, they know how to lead. We felt like he taught them how to lead. And Brady's a winner. He's a, a Division One pitcher, uh, and he's been in some big moments. So if he fails, it won't be because the moment's too big for him. How uh, much responsibility does each team that you have face to live up to the tradition? Do you think that's a there's, a, there's a, a, a good kind of pressure on the kids in that regard. I think there is. And, and, and you, you know, we've been blessed to be there. Yeah, but we try to, you know, we say that champions is just acting like a champion and putting yourself in a position to win. We've been blessed to, to get there. But we know that, you know, sometimes it doesn't mean that we're doing the best job. You know, and things fall your way. And so we just really press them and not get so result oriented, more from process oriented. You hear that all the time. And, uh, and where they can lay their head down at night and say, I gave it their all. And I think our kids have done that. You know, we, I keep referencing last year, we learned a lot in that rough spot. You know, uh, my first year, all of the distractions were off the field. Right? I, I, uh, I had a hit. We got, we, all our kids are living in, in you know, things that are not normal. And so football kind of was the most normal thing. And then last year, all of our distractions were on the field. We had a multitude of injuries. But our kids stuck together last year and learned a lot. And I think this senior class, uh, you know, took that with them. We, we, we didn't have this rallying cry about three-peating or whatever. We just had a rally cry about, you know, this cliche going 1-0 and every week. And when you do that, it's not just about winning. It's like if you lose, you got to turn the page and go 1-0. and So our kids have done a great job of embracing that. They know the culture of St. Charles. Uh, and, you know, they need to.
need to be reminded that every now and then that, hey, this is not who we are. You know, there were some things we did in the quarterfinal game that were not indicative of who we are that I thought we cleaned up, and that gave us an opportunity to win the second time. I know you've said before that, that winning is a skill. Elaborate. Well, I just think that, you know, being comfortable being uncomfortable, right? Our kids uh, have been in war. I mean, it starts with Shaw, you know, going down to the wire and then being down a, a point by uh, against Lusher. Uh, I don't think there's any panic in our kids. I think that that's a skill in itself in this day and age, you know, being able to handle the pressure and not not pointing the finger, not, not making excuses about why and what's going on. And I think that's a skill that they present. Three prepare. River Parish schools again in the dome this summer. Yeah, you know, I'm a very, very proud River Parish guy. You know, born and raised in Garyville, Louisiana, actually closer to Riverside than St. Charles Catholic. Uh, and, and just, you know, last year three River Parish schools and, and this year to have three again. I just think it talks about our community. It talks about uh, not just the coaches and the schools that support it, but I think it talks about the parents and the kids and how tough they are and resilient they are uh, and, and how they're parents allow each coach to push their kids in their programs and uh, you know, very, very proud of that despite what people may think. I, I just, I'm a River Parish guy and to see it, it really, really makes me happy. I'm going to be a long time River Parish resident, so I hope this is a trend that continues. Thank you, Coach Don. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ready? Yes, sir. We're ready. Kyle, you were part of the championship at Yeoman as a sophomore. Just talk about that journey as a sophomore and senior playing on a third string. Oh, well, you know, uh, definitely after coming off the two loses from uh, LCA, you know, we definitely go play on the third time, you know. We always had that in the back of our head, uh, you know, the three feet, you know. Let's go back. Uh, well, third time's a charm this time. This time it's a three feet. So now we're trying to change up the, uh, the words now. And, uh, you know, definitely, like, that was my first year starting. So, um, you know, it was definitely a lot of pressure going into the game. And, you know, I had a lot of uh, friends that was like, you know, you tell me like lock in for the game, you know, prepare for it. And, you know, the main thing was just, you know, I just wanted to like, you know, do my job for the seniors that like had their uh, games up on the line. You know, that was the last game. So I just wanted to hold up the end of my bargain for them. And since that time, this team played so many close, tough games. Just talk about the toughness of this team. Being able to win close games and play last week. Oh, the toughness of this team is definitely like our players. You know, we definitely stay around. We definitely grow up together a lot. Uh, we definitely all have like a lot of chemistry together. You know, we play as a team, we win as a team. You, you've seen a lot of the same people, it seems like, over the years, but now you've got an opponent that you haven't seen. Can you should talk about ha having to face somebody different here in the finals and, and the preparation for that. Oh, well, you know, uh, going against a different team, you know, we have to study them a lot more, you know. We, uh, we had an extra day yesterday, so we took that time, you know, work on our techniques, disguise a little more, you know. They definitely, that's definitely a big part of like our team, especially in the playoffs, is disguising. So we definitely worked upon that. And definitely like small details, techniques. With with all the tough tests that you guys have faced throughout your career, the game Friday night, how how do you felt like feel like you were prepared to handle what came about with that game going to overtime and you know and, and all of the big plays that happened on you know, on all phases of the game there in, in OT. You know, we were definitely uh, prepared for that game because, uh, you know, we face difficult teams just like that. You know, early in the beginning of the year, uh, we played Shaw. Uh, they are a big 5 eight uh, school. Uh, Turner's Catholic, uh, St. Marville, you know, they got a good running back, good offense. Uh, we played a lot of teams. Uh, Lucho was a great team. Um, De La Salle, you know, big team right there. And, you know, just going through all that, they gave us experience. And, you know, the previous year, we didn't do so well against them. And, you know, we definitely learned, especially with this two-year agreement that uh, that we have. So we definitely learned a lot from that. How it is with you guys, um, the way it's looking, you know, you're going to leave the school the winningest class in the history of St. Charles. How would it be in the icing on the cake if you guys get it done and get a three -point? Oh, it's definitely going to be ice on the cake because, you know, this is definitely like my last time playing at St. Charles. Definitely just playing in the dome, you know, have another ring up on your finger. That just feels great to me. Talk about some of the competitions you face. Uh, going against a running back like James, uh, especially as a linebacker, how much do you get up going against uh, another elite guy like that? Well, no, uh, going against uh, higher people like that, like the same as me, uh, that actually makes me a uh, like, hype, like, real hype. Because, you know, I, I just think me and him, we go go, we go go at it.
at each other and definitely will win the state championship. Same thing with me and Keelan, you know, that was a great game, you know. Me and, each, me and him uh, definitely respected each other before the game, you know, talked before, as we made our commitments on the same thing, you know, and talked about that. And yeah, we just, we just made a good deal, you know. We were always texting back and forth, and he told me uh, before the game, uh, uh, when game time comes, I can't be friendly. So, you know, I told him the same thing back. Kyle, we talked about it uh, yesterday, but a little bit more, not just with you, but the way that you guys battled through injuries all the way through the state championship game. How did the adversity of last year prepare you in the way that this team is mentally ready and there won't be any moment too big issues for you guys on, on the, the uh, state I think definitely going through like the adversity with that, we definitely found like some of the weakness in our team, especially when Aiden got hurt uh, during Charles Callen, you know, we needed to find a QB and then that's when we found out Brady St. Pierre started to step up to the plate. As you can see now, he's He's a pretty, pretty good uh, quarterback that we have now. You know, I compare him to Tom Brady. You know, the kind of arm he has, the accuracy he has. He's a great player, great person in general. So, do you feel like you've been under for such a Uh, well, you know, I feel like I am under recruiting. You know, it's, I feel like it might be just because of the era, area. But you know, I put everything on film. You know, big tackles, big hits. I can play man coverage. I can, I'm all over the field, perimeter, perimeter. I'm everywhere. But yeah. What do you feel like you could? I'm sorry. What do you feel like is going to be your best position in college defense? Oh, linebacker. I grew up playing uh, running back, and then I told my mom, you know, I don't like running the ball too much. I like, I want to hit, I want to hit. <laughs> you gonna hear about Calvary's offense all week long? Talk about your defense. Uh, defense, you know, uh, we definitely have a great scheme, and we're ready to play uh, Calvary, Baptist, especially like when we have prepared for them. You know. Yeah, I mean, we just we just ready to get after them. They don't know what they're getting into yet. How hungry are you to get another state championship MVP? Oh, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. We talked about this the other day. I'm real hungry. Real hungry. They had a phrase last year of uh, River Paris versus everybody. I guess this year is the secret that you can say about the other cohorts in Riverside and St. James being in there the same weekend as y'all playing for a state championship. You know, definitely last year, I think since Riverside and St. James were out, you know, I feel like that kind of hurt them a little bit. You know, this year they were definitely on a revenge tour. And you see the upset with St. James and with Riverside, you know, they just came out here with big competitors and they fought back. How much pride do you feel in the Parish and in the as a River Parish guy? How much pride do you have in knowing so many Teams from that area. Oh, we definitely have a lot of pride because you know uh, we're definitely under talk, especially the river. Like, I, I, I really don't know why, but we're just a different mentality down there. Kyle, I got one last question. Um, I know it's your all state. I know you're all state football. You're all state swimming. How do you two sports at the same time during the fall? Oh uh, well, you know. Uh, Swim, I just don't swim just because uh, it's just swim, just for another sport. But I also do it to recover my body, especially like after football practice. I'll just go to the swimming pool and I'll just get in there and do a few laps. It doesn't have to be fast, but ever since I've been doing it, since I was little, I was always fast. And then as I just kept staying with the, with the swimming, you know, my muscles just started connecting in the back of my brain. And that's, that's all swimming is about, muscle connection in the brain, really. So you just roll for the meets? Yeah, just roll. <laughs> just go in there and swim. Don't even warm up. Just hop in the pool and get out. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Thank you. 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 Step yes, I believe so. I think it helped us in terms of facing a uh, playoff team that we've been facing thus far. Heavy run oriented teams, tough nosed teams, and I think we grew from that. Talk about Greg Williams and what job he's done for you this year. Greg's been awesome. He's returned to starter. Uh, he's created state, all state last year as a quarterback. And it always helps when you bring the starting quarterback back to lead your offense. But he's more importantly, he's, he's a better kid. You know, he's, he's coachable, he's, he's a program kid. You know, he just makes our jobs a lot easier, Coach. It's been another graduating class since 2019. You know that you were part of that, obviously. But probably just talk about the experience of 2019 winning the state championship and carrying that over. What you learned from that and how you can now I think it'll benefit us. It'll really benefit me as a trans man. We 
transition to the state championship. We just managing time. You know, it just happened because of the time will fly and quick if you don't manage it right. So we're just keeping the main thing, the main thing in terms of preparation. Uh, so just managing time, managing practice, dealing with the interviews and things of that nature, just keeping our kids focused on the task at hand. You face a team, not unlike the one you faced last week, except one from the same league, you said, talk about that. A lot of similarities. Uh, it's almost like they must coach uh, some clinics together or something. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> they're foot to foot. Uh, physical ball club, tough nose ball club. Uh, but we played experienced players union in 2019 in the semis. Uh, so we know what we're in store for. And uh, I think our kids have been doing a good job of uh, preparing for this game. That, that team lost to Trey Holland. Where's the same number? Same style offense, seven yards and deep in the backfield, you know, come down here. But it's kind of similar to the kids from Sterlington as well. I mean, he's a little more thicker and runs a little more hard. Coach, you coach those guys hard. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that there's no other way in the profession that we're in as, as being leaders of young men. You can't go into this without being a friend. We want to lead them and protect these kids, give them the right things. We're not in it for friendships. You know, we're in there to build young men. So the discipline part of it is, you think, a big reason why you're here? Part of it. Part of it. Blessed to God, most important, right? Having a good group of coaches around you, good supportive administration, and all that stuff goes well into the success that we're having as a program. So what was the real chat that you had before the season with this team? What was the... What was the message from you? Unfinished business. Unfinished business. Uh, that's what we put on our schedule. That's what our word and the emphasis of the week is finished. Uh, every week we give those kids a uh, word. And it just came to fruition and, and it's just as important to use finish as our last year. How much of a boost was it to continue to finish your business this year and, and route beat Manny who ended your year last season? It's funny you say that. You know, Sometimes I thank God has funny sense of humor, but he, he blessed us to be in a position to avenge that, right? But now, in all due respect to Manny, uh, I think we played well that night. Uh, I think we transitioned and had obviously had a great week last week against Arlington, and we're hoping to build up that as we lead to this championship game against you. From your perspective, what did you earn as a head coach getting to the Dome in Scotland? And, and what can you take from that experience that's helping you get ready for this week? That was an interesting night at Scotlandville, man. We were scheduled to play at seven, didn't get on the field till he left. But that's another story. I believe Ed was sitting in on that interview as well after the game. So just yep. managing time and, and, and being able to deal with anything that comes, learning how to keep your kids focused for whatever happens. And, and it all boils down to just managing the time because you never know what's going to happen. Coach, that, that game goes by so quickly in the dome. Have, have you warned your kids about that? Hey, let's... Let's make sure we're on cue early because if not, it, it, you've seen it get away from teams because they're kind of a little starstruck. Yeah, it got away from us against the That year when I was at Scotland, we actually met on that as a staff after practice. And we talked about the, 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 the very same thing. Just make sure we manage the game because if we go well through and at the blink of an eye, you can be down to it. So do you have to coach it a little bit harder this week? Maybe? I think you be who you are. You, know, you have to keep the main thing the main thing. Continues the same process that got you to where you are. You don't have to deviate too much from it. Yeah. THDE, coach, just talk about what that means to say to you. Yeah, I think that was instilled by the great Rick Daly. Uh, we use that in our Wildcat Creed uh, in honor of him. You know, so we respect everything, all the history and tradition that he's built at St. James. But we're just trying to carry on. Coach, do so you think the hard work has paid off for you more than anything else? Assistant from Paz and now at St. James the head coach. Now you got them to the dome. What are your thoughts that the hall was paying off? And also the other group of parish groups joining you at the dome this weekend. Yeah, well, congratulations to those guys, Coach at St. Charles and Riverside. Those guys do a great job with their programs. Uh, we actually scheduled St. Charles next year and looking to get Riverside on as well and bring some of these River Parish teams together and get those games back going. Uh, but in terms of what we're doing at, 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 at St. James, man, it's just it's more about, it's, it's never about me. Man. It's about the guy that's around me. I, I, let, I allow to be a student center, student first program. Uh, it's great to have a great community showing with us. They showed out, came up and showed up and showed out last week at Sterling. And we're looking for them to do the same thing uh, this coming Friday. Coach, does, does it make financial sense to, uh, to schedule those games? <laughs> yes. <laughs> to answer your question, absolutely. What do you feel like that's said? Uh, yeah. Last 
During the summer, we put a lot of time and effort into where we are now, and uh, it's showing. It's, it's showing. So hopefully, uh, not hopefully, we're here now. Hopefully, we get to get, get to the thing and be able to accomplish it. Is any game or point in the season that really put you in this path in this direction? And really point to and say that was when I knew we were going to be this team. Mm, I wouldn't say one game specifically because we all we show different flashes of each game. So I see there's points in every game you can go look at offense, defense, special teams that you can say this is one of the teams. What, what do you think? Team in Union Parish that was in the Dome last year. Few times very similar to the story. I talked about it twice. Uh, Facing a good team in Union Parish, they've been there numerous times. But, you know, we can we have what it takes to get to that point and get, finish the mission. The, the game against E.D. White obviously didn't go your way, but how do you feel like maybe it helped reset this team to refocus for the playoffs and the run you're on now? Yeah, we felt kind of short in that game, but I seen a different outlook on it as a, from the team aspect of it. Aspect of it. They were us down and they noticed we made mistakes and we were able to overcome them and get to this point. So I feel like it was a great growing pain as a team standpoint of it, and I'm proud of where we came from. How satisfying was it to get another chance at a Manny in a route to the state championship appearance? <laughs> it was great. The bracket fell perfectly, perfectly for us. We, got, we went up there, we fell kind of short my junior year, and now they came to us my senior year. So I guess you could say that was a perfect fall. And how much do you think the way y'all dominated them helped to propel you in the next game to get to the state championship? It was great to be able to kind of reflect on it and be able to shake back from the point of last year but we handled the game, used the 24-hour rule our head coach gave us, and got back to it and noticed that do what it takes to be able to go on. As a senior, how important is it to finish this off the right way to be able to uh, break home and have a state championship? It's a major, it's a major point. Not many seniors are able to finish the senior year with a state championship opportunity, so I just feel like it's a great opportunity that I feel like my teammates, my coaches, the community will be able to support and be able to back us up. What have you heard from some of the guys uh, maybe this week who were on that 2019 team to, to help get you, get you ready for for this year's game? I've talked to a lot of guys, and the main thing they say is finish. Finish. Don't get to the point of get complacent. Don't get to the point of get comfortable. Finish. If you haven't done nothing yet, that's the main thing I always talk to us about. Finish. That's, that's the main word of the week. Finish. 2019, Shabal Smith was the guy who really down the business in that team. But how it is, you know, how I feel that you're the guy now that's going into the dome and leading your team to possibly that time. It feels good knowing that my teammates look at me at that as the guy, but I don't really see it as that. I feel like it's a team thing, and I feel like we're doing it. How it is adjusting from Coach um, Valdez to Coach uh, Davis. It was it was different noticing the point we had to shift from, but I said there really wasn't a lot of things that changed because they still have the same outlook on the game, and that's dominant. We're, we're dominant. Your chances of winning this game? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a confident person. So I feel like I feel like we're gonna do what it takes to be able to win. Yeah. This is one of three teams. Y'all are one of three teams from the River Parish that are playing in the dome. Um, how much pride maybe do you have in that, like being a part of that representation and also showing like what the River Parish has to offer as far as football goes? The River Parish is a 
a small area that's very often overlooked. And I'm, I'm a big room out of it. This part of it, just like the other schools that's here. So I feel like we're making a point of that area, of the small area, and we all look for any help. Braden, how much of a leadership role did you take for this upcoming season to help get your team back or get to the Super Dome to for a championship? Me and my other, I don't know what I remember, I think 20, 29, we all sat down and noticed that in April, we were going to be a senior that team. So that's one of the major things we put in the, put in the emphasis that we wasn't going to let no one, other, no one come into the district of Rutgers that we was going to lead the team the right way. Coach Davis, he always holds us accountable for everything. From discipline action, the locker room action, the on the field action, the classroom action. Everything becomes us about it. So that's one of the major things we put in the emphasis this year. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Rochelle, Riverside, congratulations. <laughs> Took out a number one seed last week. It was worth the wait. You had to wait a while to finish that game. <clears throat> Yeah, we had a hour and a half rain delay. Uh, right before half, we had about a minute three left in the first half. Uh, we were up 27-7, so uh, a little momentum on our side, and you know we the lightning hit right after a kickoff, right after a touchdown. So we were inside, and uh, you know it was talks about postponing and coming back tomorrow, and uh, you know the field conditions and if it's safe playing conditions. But you know it's a two-hour bus trip. You got the momentum. Uh, I wasn't leaving, you know, we were going to stay in there till, till midnight if we had to, but uh, we came out of halftime, man, our kids were, you know, we still had that juice, we still had the momentum, and uh, just played well in the trenches on both sides of the ball with the conditions. Defense gave up nothing, I mean, no points in the game, they scored on the interception, Yeah, so, yeah, the long touchdown was a, we threw a pick six. Uh, defense has been kind of getting us here. Uh, the, light, the first couple rounds of the playoffs against Catholic Point Capi did a really good job against a really physical, uh, brand of football and then you know you played a rematch against St. Martin's and, and the explosive players that they got and our defense did a really good job holding uh, all of them under 100 yards and holding them to two scores and then getting the shutout this week uh, not giving up points against another explosive player at their quarterback the Dortez kid was a really special player uh, and then a couple times defensively we didn't do them favors and we had a bad snap on a punt in the weather and gave them the ball in the red zone and our defense held them out so uh our defensive coordinator, Chris Lashley, is, is, he's tremendous. He does a great job. He's a good teacher. And we got good players. Our kids have been doing a good job. Uh, year two of it, they kind of understand where they're supposed to be and, and the expectations. And uh, they, they're the group that got us here. Dedrick Lashley will never pass the eye test, but he passes every other test. Talk about that. Yeah, that's that's what kind of the talk. And, and everybody asked it real height and weight. And I heard somebody ask him in there. And he said 5'4", so we'll go with 5'4". But uh, uh, he, he is great, man. He is. Uh, you, you look at turn the film on on Friday nights and he's getting it done and I, you know I, I get it I was on the other side the recruiting side of it and uh, you know you, you do want to know heights and weights but when the film turns on he's doing it uh, close to 2,500 yards I think he's got 38 touchdowns in the year uh, explosive run after explosive run against good opponents so uh, and, and he's just a total package he can catch the ball out the backfield he understands pass protection he can run inside the tackles for his size and he is a great kid he's uh, great in the hallways, uh, academically, does a good job, uh, good family, he, he's everything you want. You've been a top assistant with championship programs, you've talked about it, but working with Frank Monica, Tim Dettelier, Jay Roth, championship programs, just talk about how much that's been for you. Uh, a bunch, you know, as a young coach, getting into it, I was blessed to work for some really good uh, mentors uh, in Jay Roth, and Frank Monica, Tim Dettelier at Ludger, and last, uh, Tim Rebo at Nichols, all maybe Hall of Fame coaches in, in our state. And, uh, you know, you just sit back, shut up, and learn, you know, and, and watch those guys and you take some mental notes for if you ever got an opportunity to be a, a head coach. And uh, it was always something that was a goal of mine. You don't know when it's going to happen. But uh, I learned so much from them. I, I still stay in touch with, with all those guys and ask them questions when I have questions. And they've been great to me. So, uh, yeah, I owe them a lot. And uh, they are a part of a reason why we're here. Today. What so, is it that – has enabled you to get from taking this job to playing for a championship in two years? Um, it's important in the River Parishes. Uh, you know, you just look here today, we got three of us here in St. James, St. Charles, and, and, and Riverside. So it, it's, football is important. Uh, it's been done before with, with Coach Stubbs and Coach Mickey Roussel, both uh, getting it to here. And so, so I knew it could be done, you know, 
people say you did you think this fast I, I don't know if I could put a timeline on it but uh, I knew uh, River Parish football is important I know there's good players in the River Parish uh, we got great administration that football is important and athletics is important uh, I grew up right down the, the road in Lutcher so uh, family I had family that went to Riverside and uh, gave me an opportunity to come back with my two kids of my own and they go to school there and uh, so, so yeah, I knew it could be done. Uh, I didn't know exactly what the roster was going to look like when we first got there. And to say, hey, year two, we're going to make it to the Dome, I'd, I'd be lying to say if I thought that was the clear-cut expectations. But, uh, man, when a bunch of kids buy in and believe and you got some talent, uh, it can get done. Coach, after the regular season game against St. Martin, you, you told me that you knew in the spring that you had a good running back in Dedrick Lasty, but when was the last time you saw somebody in his body frame dominate the way he has this year? So I, I compare him all the time. I tell him this. He, he never met the – but we had a kid at uh, at Nichols that I coached and, and Dontrell Taylor from White Castle. Uh, very similar build. Uh, similar kids and similar players. So I, I seen him do it at the Division One level. And, and everything Dontrell was, Dedrick is. He, he was smart. He understand where and how to run the football. Like he understood concepts. And hey, on this play, I'm pressing this gap or, or this shoe of the guard. And this is who my eyes need to be on when I run this play. And he gets this. Dedrick gets those things. And uh, he's got ability on top of that. He, he, he can run and uh, he can make you miss. But he also understands football and he gets it. Um, so I, I've seen it. And so in spring, yeah. We talked about our defense doing well the last three weeks. Our defense is pretty good defense. We're good up front. And he was making explosive runs in spring and in the fall camp. So I kind of knew then that we'd have something special at the running back position. But even him last year as a slot receiver, he didn't get as many opportunities at the running back position because we had a back in Elijah Davis. But I knew we had a good football player. He just wasn't getting the touches last year as a sophomore. Do you think the season kind of took out off after the first St. Martin's game? Yeah, that was a good one. That was a, I think that was the first game maybe that we put all three phases together. Uh, you know, I thought we learned some things in the Newman loss and our, our one loss. Uh, we did some things sloppy as far as penalties and turnovers, didn't stay inside the chains. And, you know, I, I think that's gotten better throughout the year. Uh, so, yeah, I think that was a game. Uh, the Country Day game, I thought we played really good on special teams and kind of took some momentum there. And then that game, putting all three phases together, and, in the district and uh, yeah, and then in the playoffs, I think we found different ways to, to win. The, the point could be game round two. We block the first punt of the game and get a touchdown off it, and we block an extra point and win 14-12, uh, but didn't play well in offense. So, you know, now where we need it the most, a different phase of the game steps up and, and uh, to get us to this point. Coach, yeah. what's your opponent this week? Yeah, very, very talented. I mean, uh, like Vermilion Catholic, a team that knows has been here before, right? They they always in the mix. They either in the dome or flirting with the dome in the semifinals. Uh, so they know how to win. Uh, they're well coached, uh, and they got players. I mean, they they're, they got the size and they got the speed. Uh, there's not a lot of holes when you you know you try to find things watching film on. Hey, we can attack this. There's not a lot of holes as far as player wise. Uh, so yeah, we we got we know. Uh, what we have to do, we know it's a good opponent. We know we're going to have to play well. Uh, but, but yeah, they they, uh, they got the people. They, they got the, the talent. They got the whole line at big, uh, D line. They got size, and they're really good at the skill positions. Do you think running the, the running game is going to be really key to try to keep Southern Lab off the field at, a, at, at the offense that is very dangerous and can score at any time? Yeah, the quarterback's really good. Probably one of the better ones we've seen this year. He's a dual threat kid. He can run just as well as he can throw. Uh, you know, I think you got to mix it up against them as far as offensively, and, you know, against their defense. Their defense has really been good. To me, their defense may be just as good as the offense. I think they're really good on both sides of the ball. They do a good job of putting extra people in the box to make it tough to run and play a lot of man coverage, right? So now a lot of times you're going to get cover zero. There's no safeties, right? So there's always one or maybe two more than you can account for in the blocking schemes. Uh, so I think we're going to have to mix it up and do a little bit of both. Yeah, that interception was special. Uh, you know, it wasn't one thrown right at him where you know he had no choice. But he went up and got it with two hands at a high point, and then you know takes it 40 yards and goes score in a big moment. So you can tell what type of player you're dealing with, uh, and he's not the only one. You know, there's 
there's a couple more back there who can cover that they trust playing man coverage for majority of the game, uh, which is not easy to do. So it says a lot about their players. Oh, good. Um, you mentioned a little bit earlier, but just the pride of the River Parish mm -hmm. and just having this type of representation, just what it says maybe about football in, in, in the yeah this is great just to be here with, with you guys and uh, be able to represent our school and Dedrick to be able to get out here with y'all is uh, anytime you can get your school and your brand and your logo out there I think it's I think it's important uh, our community is far enough uh, they love football it's been since 2016 last time they were in the Superdome and, uh, man the school hallways are decorated with the dome and this and, and the people were there Sunday while we were practicing and uh, yeah, I know they can be a big crowd tailgate and get ready to go. Appreciate you. Dedrick Lasley, Riverside, congratulations on getting to this point. Talk about what it means to reach a state championship game. I mean, it's, it's good. feels like we're making history. Last time we've been was 2016, so it feels real good. And it's going to be like, it's going to be a show. How many times have people told you you can't do it? Look where that most of you all my life. I mean, when, when they look at me, all they see is my height. But my coaches and everyone else around, they see more than me. I remember I told you, like, after the St. Martin's game, I said, you really start there, but you had a humble look. You felt like more than anything else, I believe in my team. And it seemed like your team really came through last week. Tell us some of your feelings on last week's victory going into this week's game. Last week victory, um, my teammates, they really showed up big. We had two eighth graders. They started. They made big plays on third and fourth down. Chris, I think he had two touchdowns. Boogie, he threw, he threw a touchdown pass, and he had big clutch catches. We had a freshman, Cameron Matt. He caught a clutch, clutch pass on the third and about 12. Uh, sophomore quarterback, Brock, he came through big. Making good decisions. Even when he messed up, we picked him up, told him to keep going. And our defense, they came up big. Everybody on the defense. What did you, what have you seen from Southern Mass? What do you, what do you know about them? Uh, they're disciplined, and they, they're not scared to tackle, and they're going to put the right gaps. Going back to the St. Martin's game, you had more than 300 rushing yards. I don't know if you even capped 20 carries. How much did that game propel you to the season you've had? Uh, really, it was all about just staying focused. We had to stay focused and do everything we did. And with the St. Martin game, I had to come up big for the team. Every time they handed me the ball, I just made the best that I could with what the team was giving me. Anybody you try to model your game after, somebody that you admire that you watch, that you try to follow? Well, my daddy used to show me Marshall Bug videos. So. Really, that's who I grew up watching. Um, you're one of three teams from the River Parishes in the Dome. Um, being from there, right? How much pride do you take in there being so much representation there? And like, how much does that say about quality of football across the uh, it, shows, it shows a lot of pride and quality because it shows that we're here. There's a lot of talent down here. Yeah, it's a lot of tell, <laughs> what do you what do you what do you have you heard from some of the guys from 2016 some of the other teams that made state championship runs at Riverside about you know what it means to to, to have your school back in the championship game? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, one of our coaches on our coach staff, he was a quarterback, Jordan Love. Uh, he, he told us this is a big deal and to make the best out of it that we can. What does Coach Russell have to you? Talk about him and the Lee, big mentor in all of this. I mean, he put the he put the trust in me to put the team on my back. Sometimes uh, he he just goes Lee. I don't even know what to see because he was really like he was really the first person to give me a chance. Uh, he gave me the starting running back spot. Uh, he told me he knew that I was gonna be good. Just trust the O line, trust that everybody, and I trusted him. What would it mean to end this season winning that winning the state championship? What would it mean to you and 
to your team. You know what I mean? A lot. It'll show that all the hard work we did it wasn't for nothing. Uh, all the one tens, all the conditioning, coming in early, leaving our lead, all of that, it wasn't for nothing. Have you ever been on the floor of the Superdome and what you imagine what it's going to be like to be out there? Yeah. I mean, who doesn't, who doesn't want to play in the Superdome? I mean, we all watch the Saints game from a fan point of view, but nobody has ever really played there. Yeah.